Congress takes up a number of pro-life issues before the Easter recess. In the month of April alone, House Republican leadership filed a discharge petition to force a floor vote on the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. There is also the Senate committee hearing this month on whether big tech has been censoring pro-life social media accounts. And last week, a Senate committee held a hearing for the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act, a bill that would end abortions at five months of pregnancy, which is when science shows babies can feel pain. At that hearing was Senate Judiciary Committee member Senator Josh Hawley, who questioned abortion attempt survivor Melissa Odin. Tell us why you think that's true and why in your case and, and in, in all of these cases for babies born like you, prompt treatment is absolutely vital. I think that's another great question, Senator. I survived at, an at a hospital because, of course, most late-term abortions take place at hospitals, not because they're trying to prepare themselves to provide care to children like me, but because of the greater risk to women's health. We had the chance to speak with Senator Hawley after the hearing. Here's our interview. Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri joins us now from Capitol Hill. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Senator, you serve on the Senate Judiciary Committee, which recently held a hearing on the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act. What were your main takeaways from this hearing? Well, first of all, it is absolutely vital that we protect infants in the womb who can feel pain, and they can feel pain as early as 20 weeks. I mean, the studies show, the science on this is just overwhelming, that the infant will recoil if they're prodded. Uh, they will, uh, their uh, pain uh, stress hormones uh, will, will spike. Um, if they're prodded. I mean, these are infants who can, they can feel pain. Um, they're, in fact, it's interesting, surgeons, when they're performing surgeries to actually help the infant, will anesthetize the infant at that age, precisely because they're able to feel pain. So it is, it is incumbent upon us to protect these infants in the womb who can feel pain just like an adult can, and to make sure that they're not subjected to these gruesome and terrible abortion procedures. You questioned abortion survivor Melissa Odin at the hearing. What did you learn from her witness? Oh, you know, she was an incredible witness. She's an abortion survivor. Uh, she was uh, left to die uh, after uh, she had survived her abortion. But fortunately, there was a nurse there at a hospital. She was born in a hospital, a nurse there who rescued her, took her to the uh, neonatal intensive care unit and was able to save her life. And today she's just this an amazing woman who has done incredible things, an incredible advocate. At this hearing on the pain capable bill, your Democratic colleagues brought up the Georgia heartbeat legislation, Roe v. Wade and Title 10 funding. Why were they conflating these issues? And in your opinion, did they address the issue at hand, whether abortions should be banned once babies feel pain? Well, they don't want to address the real issue, which is the science shows overwhelmingly that the baby can feel pain at 20 weeks. And also, we are one of the only countries in the world, one of only seven countries in the world, who permits abortions in these circumstances. You know who else is on that list? China, North Korea, Iran. This is not the kind of company that we want to be keeping. And unfortunately, my Democrat colleagues, they don't want to face up to the facts here. They're also, they don't want to face up to the science. You know, science has, has shown us, it shows us all new kinds of things about the, the human development that we've learned in the last few decades and just in the last few years. And science shows us that these babies can feel pain. My Democrat colleagues don't want to talk about that. They have a weirdly anti-science uh, position on this issue. And uh, look, it, it, it is, I think it's becoming more and more apparent. It's an extreme position that they've adopted and the American people are rejecting it. I want to turn now to other pro-life issues where you have been leading. Senator, you recently wrote a letter to Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey calling on him to open the tech giant up to it, an independent outside audit after Twitter recently suspended the account for the pro-life movie Unplanned. Senator, can you tell us about this letter and have you heard back from Twitter? I have not heard back. And look, it's a very simple proposition. Twitter has a history now of discriminating against conservative viewpoints and especially pro-lifers. So this is what we call deplatforming, where they take away the social media platform of groups that they disagree with. And it's just happened too many times to be coincidental. With the unplanned movie, it happened on opening weekend. Opening weekend. Is that a coincidence? So Jack Dorsey and company, they say, oh, it is a coincidence. Well, fine. Open up your books, do an independent audit, and then release those results to the public. Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. 
And joining us now to break down all the pro-life headlines is Sue Sweezy Liebel, the National Women's Pro-Life Caucus Coordinator for the Susan B. Anthony List. She joins us now from Indianapolis, Indiana. Sue, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. First, can you speak to Senator Hawley's pro-life leadership as a freshman senator and particularly the voice he brings on the powerful Senate Judiciary Committee? Oh, Senator Hawley is a pro-life rock star. You know, he's the former attorney general of Missouri whose experience is just invaluable on this very important committee that votes on, you know, court uh, nominees. And then before that, he worked for the Beckett Fund for Religious mm -hmm. Liberty and was a lead attorney on the Hobby Lobby case, uh, fighting the Obama administration's abortifacient uh, drug mandate at the Supreme Court. So he, and you know, he's just one of several uh, courageous pro-life leaders on this committee, um, including another new senator, uh, Marsha Blackburn, mm -hmm. um, Joni Ernst, Lindsey Graham, uh, Chuck Grassley, Mike Lee. Just it, it, it really shows us. Um, how important elections are. Sue, so it's been a busy few weeks on Capitol Hill here for the pro-life movement. Why do you think this is an especially good time to talk specifically about the paying capable bill? Well, the extremism of the Democratic Party in states like New York and Virginia and, um, and in Congress even has put the national spotlight on the issue of late term abortion and infanticide. Um, that conversation is having an impact. We see it um, in the recent uh, Marist poll that showed a substantial gr growth mm -hmm. in pro-life views among Democrats, mm -hmm. young adults, mm -hmm. uh, the incredible number, um, more than 250 pro-life bills introduced in states. I mean, this, this is just rolling through the country, this shock and awe on mm -hmm. some of this uh, infanticide and late-term abortion. And, and as Senator uh, Hawley pointed out, and Chairman Graham has too introduced the bill, we frequently mentions that United States is a radical outlier. We are a radical outlier on late-term abortion. Senator Hawley also told us about how he is calling for an independent outside audit of Twitter after it suspended the unplanned movie account on its opening weekend. And last week, Senator Ted Cruz in a committee hearing referenced a Susan B. Anthony List tweet that appeared to censor. So how has Twitter been responding to claims of bias towards pro-life accounts? You know, uh, they're not, uh, they're, they weren't in that committee this week. You know, Senator Hawley was questioning representatives from Facebook and Twitter um, in, in several stunning exchanges during that committee last week, um, everyone seems to agree that the big tech companies need to be more transparent, yet they wouldn't commit to making any of their protocols public. Uh, Senator Cruz, you may remember, he displayed on a, on a visual um, a quote uh, by Mother Teresa. It was actually from Marjorie Dannenfelser, the president of Susan B. Anthony. It was one of her tweets. Um, Mother Teresa saying, abortion is profoundly anti-woman. Uh, three quarters of its victims are women, half the babies and all the mothers. And when they he confronted the um, the representative there, and, and do they consider that hate speech? Do they consider what Mother Teresa said to be hate speech? They had no response. They were completely silent. Mm. Finally, Sue, we've been closely monitoring the House's discharge petition for the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. What's the deadline to get enough signatures to bring this bill to a vote? Well, it's open-ended, and it doesn't really have a specific deadline. We want to be sure to keep the pressure on the Democrats who haven't signed on yet. We need a total of 218 signatures mm -hmm. for the discharge position. We have almost 200 at this point. So, you know, members are going to be, uh, members of Congress could be home in their districts on mm -hmm. this Easter weekend mm -hmm. and Easter recess. So it's really key, a good time for your viewers to make their voices heard, um, call their office, check if they've signed on yet or not. Um, mm -hmm. And you can find that out on uh, ProLifeWeekly.com. You can see if your representative has or has not signed. And if not, you can click and send them a message. Excellent. We have to continue to put that pro-life pressure on them. Sue Swayze yes. Liebel, the National Women's Pro-Life Caucus Coordinator for the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you again for joining us. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you.